Shortly, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yep, I can hear you. All right, thanks, Keith. Good to see y'all. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Good to be seen. <laughs> so, can you get 75 people on this screen? Uh, I don't know about 75 people um on the screen uh, i signed up for zoom that accommodates 300. so okay well great so yeah. i've never been in a group this large so i had to tune in and see what was going on <laughs> i understand i understand and i haven't either this is so we're all guinea pigs in this together okay <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Mayor ha Dean should be on shortly. If she isn't already, she was saying she was waiting. Oh, we're getting quite a few folks. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Let's see, Jean, are you there? Let's see if she's here. Yes, I'm here. I don't know why my camera's not working. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if I can find you on here and see if I just don't have you on where's jean 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 can you hear me i can hear you okay yes. i don't know why my camera is not well let Start me look. video let me look oh no i had to give you permission okay everybody we can't hear you because you're all muted um Jim, we see your ceiling fan, Jim Patton. You want to adjust your computer? Jean, do you want us to unmute or stay mute? Um, no, stay muted, please, unless you've got a burning desire to talk to me. Um, oh, I thought we were gonna ver we were gonna verbally sing. We're gonna verbally sing? Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> everybody unmute. We're gonna sing the welcome song. Jeff Johnson's going to lead us. <laughs> well, what's the welcome song? We have the... You from Main Road. Oh, that song. <laughs> See, now you know why I mute my mic at the podium. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see everybody. I can't, I really, really, really can't tell you how good it is to see everybody. This is uh, long overdue, and I uh, give my kudos to Karen for getting us scheduled and on board. I know that we are all scheduled to start at 1210. So I don't want to join the, um, I don't want to get things going earlier until um, everybody has had a chance to log in. And I think Karen's going to keep looking at her email in case somebody's having problems. Hi, Max and Monica. I see you guys. <laughs> so lots of people. Yeah, it's wonderful to see everybody. We are very excited that Mayor Hala will be speaking to us in a little bit, um, and very excited that uh, Chad has gotten that arranged for us, and it will be recorded um, so that uh, we can share it with people above and beyond. So thank you all for that. Um, I'm hoping that everybody is staying safe and well. I know that, um, if you can tell from my observation. I'm uh, working from the office. Uh, myself and my finance director are here. Um, uh, I'm here every day. She's here a couple days a week and um, we each have our own side of the building. Uh, so we're staying very safe. Um, I want to give a couple shout outs while we're waiting for folks to get on board. But one is to Jamie 
and his team at Gateway Hotel and Conference Center for being so wonderful in the good times and uh, especially wonderful in these really difficult times. And our heart and our prayers, uh, I, I'm saying it from me, from, so my prayers and, and from all of our hearts go to you and your staff because I know that this has got to be a difficult time. And Jamie, if you wanna say anything, I'll give you permission to unmute. That, that's very sweet of you, Jean, for sure. And, and I know there's a lot of staff out there across the, the globe that are going through this. You know, when you've got servers that, you know, folks that, that are, are struggling right now with their unemployment. So I appreciate that and, and we look forward to having you back here soon. We're very excited to get back. I think that um, one of my uh, requests will be, now I can't think of what it is, but it's the chicken on a biscuit. Um, like the chicken sauce. I love that one. We haven't had it for a while, so that'd be something worth worth having. Um, it's 12.07, so we'll give it a couple more minutes. I, I uh, think Mayor- Rock off with you from a rotary, Nevada, London, or Gay Perry, from far off the USA. We're glad we're that glad you glad are that. here today. Right. Join us right again right. whenever yeah, you're near. Right. Yeah. Join us again and we'll make we'll it make clear. clear. Around the world you'll Hello. always be. Welcome, Welcome to the to <laughs> Thank you, Jeff and team. Lots of people in the background moving their lips and singing away. So, um, I'll let you all do your own Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we still got a couple more minutes. Does anybody have any other shout outs? Well, the other thing I wanna shout out to everybody is thank you Rotarians. Um, early on in March, which seems like a thousand years ago, uh, um, one of our Rotarians had an idea about reaching out to other Rotarians to see if they needed help with groceries or medication. And we had um, well, so far, okay. we had a phone call here at United Way, and uh, a gentleman needed help with both. And one of our own, Jeff Isles, uh, raised his hand and said, "I'll help." And so he ended up taking food and uh, the gentleman's prescription over to um, that gentleman. And so uh, we've since been working with Heartland Senior Services, and they're doing a lot of the the delivery. So that's why you haven't heard a lot from us. I know that our staff member, um, Malai Amfer, had uh, asked for Rotarians to help with book distribution and it, um, she was overwhelmed. It was signed up, she didn't have any holes in the schedule last week and so she was overwhelmed with everybody's willingness to say, yes, I'm, I'm here and I'm here to help. So for those of you that are able to help, thank you. For those of you who, because of um, your own personal situation need to stay put. That's perfectly fine. We want you to stay put. We want you to stay safe. And I just wanted to extend this to you as well, that if there's anything that you need in your home, um, that there are fellow Rotarians that are willing to deliver it to you. Um, and you don't have to worry about us being six feet away. We can just leave things on your doorstep and ring your doorbell and we can figure out dollars later or you can do online ordering and we can help with that. So um, I also wanna give a special shout out before we get started um, to uh, the city of Ames and to Story County and what I know now as EOC, which is, is called the Emergency Operations Center. And so there's lots of people behind the scenes that are working very, very hard. I think that, um, uh, we should be very proud of our community. If you do get the United Way newsletter, one of the things that I said in that newsletter was in 1953, this community um, stepped up for the first Live United uh, campaign and, and exceeded it by almost $10,000. And I'm seeing that kind of support throughout the community, not just to United Way, but to all of our organizations and our, our, our friends. And so if, if uh, if you haven't looked um, on the United Way website, there is the COVID-19 trying to keep up with information as much as possible as far as what's available. And as always, if you do have somebody that is in need of uh, support, they can always call our number as well. So I think we're right at 210, or excuse me, 1210. Um, welcome to the April 13th Rotary Club of Ames. If I had a bell, I'd ring it. We've already sung the welcome song. Um, so we only have 40 minutes on our Zoom. 
So I wanna jump right into Mayor Hala. And after I introduce Mayor, um, I will actually put myself on mute as well. Um, I don't think we're gonna have uh, a chance for questions, uh, but I, if you want, you can put that in your chat and we can always try and see if that works. But I think right now I'm not gonna spend a lot of time introducing him. Um, John Hala is our mayor and has been for a number of years and he uh, is not a stranger to anybody. Um, and especially now, and I want to say to the mayor how, um, just how amazed I am at how you have stepped up for our community in this, this pandemic. And, and thank you for everything that you have done. Um, I know that you've been working hand in glove with everybody at the city and throughout the county. So thank you. But I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself and let the mayor take over. Thank you, Jean. It's really a pleasure to uh, be with you. And I uh, have kind of a, a temporary new normal right now. So uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, a number of things. First of all, um, not talk about COVID-19 initially. I'd like to uh, really focus on some of the city projects, the planning, uh, sustainability initiatives that we're undertaking as a community. Secondly, a very important piece that's kind of gotten lost is the census 2020. Um, that's had an important impact on our community. Then I'll touch on uh, some COVID-19 observations and uh, input, and then if there are some time, some questions and answers. So without further ado, um, City Project, well, believe it or not, we still are operating and we are working on a number of things. And the most exciting thing to me is we're actually starting on the South Grand and South Fifth Extension. You probably have heard the uh, trees being ground up in the background in the city, um, but they are underway. Contracts were awarded both for the South Fifth Extension, which will go from over by uh, a little bit west of where uh, Boys and Girls Club is. It'll connect over to South Grand, and South Grand will extend down to South 16th. The estimated completion date for South 16th will be sometime in fall of 2021, so about a year and a half. We've got bridges to build, paving to undertake, and uh, intersection improvements to be made. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, being the mayor to uh, cut the ribbon on uh, that one. It's been something that's been in the, in the works for a long, long time. Secondly, there's 321 State Street and providing affordable and market rate housing. Um, as you probably are all aware, that was related to the Breckenridge um, purchase of the property. Then Iowa State, in partnership with uh, working with the city as well, too, um, picked up the uh, property or some of the property. And um, council has uh, authorized and Trip Street has been extended through over the state. Now, and the next step is, is developing some site plans. And council did see some site plans here recently some options in terms of how to develop both the south and north sides of Trip Street. And uh, some of the conversation is now around, is there a need for rental housing? It had been talked about from some extent, um, having all single family homes there. And so there was supposed to be a public um, workshop that we can be held in concert with the, another topic on 321 State. That has been postponed. We anticipate an awful lot of public input being uh, offered at that time. And so we want to make sure that we can provide that. So that's gonna be pushed back until later this year. Some of you have probably been driven, driven by Ionis Grove. You see Miracle Park, you got a big mound of dirt out there. There is uh, construction going on right there. A very important worthwhile project, which is underway and I don't have an exact date on completion, but that's gonna be uh, a worthwhile addition to our community. Additionally, we have a Homewood golf course. We're gonna put a new uh, clubhouse there. Council just approved the contracts here a few weeks ago. Uh, they're gonna demolish the, actually we're gonna burn the house then demolish the house. Um, fire, fire department's gonna use that as a practice um, endeavor. And then we're gonna create a brand new, uh, larger clubhouse area. It'll have some public meeting room space there as well as a concession stand. And that construction should start this year. And then also uh, the power plant. Um, when I first came into office and was able to go through and do some tours of facilities, uh, when they mentioned boilers, I'm used to in the building construction trade industry a boiler being smaller than a room, but these are like nine story tall boilers with uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of feet of piping in them. 
And uh, they were actually suspended from the structure above and hung. And we've been going through and doing some major boiler improvements. Um, we have two of them. One is either, I think we just recently completed at the end of last year. Now we're working on the second one. Um, but you can be uh, assured that when that's all said and done, we'll have a lot more um, reliability. We had a lot of problems with, we converted from coal to natural gas, had a lot of problems with the corrosion occurring on the uh, piping inside there. And that is being addressed through these improvements. You probably heard also the Ames 2040 comprehensive plan. Council started working on that last year along with staff and our consultant. And uh, that got put temporarily on hold in terms of our public input, but that is going to be picked up. We're going to start having workshops. Last uh, two weeks ago, council uh, gave direction to staff. They did not want to suspend any workshops during this time that we're being socially distancing. And so we're going to pick those up. And uh, tomorrow night at the council meeting, council will give direction, final direction to staff on a proposed work, um, work schedule, workshop schedule, excuse me. And there's gonna be a lot of Ames 2040 plan um, workshops in the future. And I'm gonna to touch on briefly a little later in my comments just about uh, how you can access the, uh, the, uh, the meetings. They'll still be on channel 12, but also how you can participate in the interim. Sustainability is another big commitment that the, the uh, city has and has been demonstrating. Uh, we should see construction on the solar farm going on this year out there by the airport. We're currently going through a greenhouse gas inventory, which will, will, be, light, which will be followed by uh, developing a climate action plan. Another thing that was really uh, quite intriguing was uh, council approved last fall in partnership with REG, and I just can't stress enough how, what a great partner REG has been with the city. We have uh, five of our largest dump trucks that uh, service both snow plows as well as general dump truck um, utility vehicles were converted to a B100 fuel. And what it is, there's a, you have to start up with regular diesel fuel in the winter time, otherwise you have a problem with them gelling up. But there's technology that, that, that REG um, and another company that they partner with have come up with that as soon as the engine reaches a certain temperature, they switch over to B100. And it, these trucks have operated flawlessly this winter. There's a pilot project that REG wanted to work together with a, uh, a local entity. Uh, City of Ames um, embraced that, and I think it has been an absolute success, and it's going to pave the way for potentially some additional uh, improvements and uh, upgrades to other, to other vehicles. We do have two electric buses that will be delivered in a year or two. There's quite a lag time between ordering that. We got a, a SciRide got a grant um, that is being applied to not only doing, buying the buses, but also doing some, some facility upgrades from an electrical standpoint. And we have taken delivery of five police hybrid cruisers, and the, that will eliminate the idling of the, uh, the motor while they're at the uh, stoplights, as well as the idling um, when they're actually at a, uh, on a call. And the estimate was it's gonna eliminate about 40,000 pounds annually of uh, carbon output. And um, people have asked, you know, why not go whole scale? Well, we wanna make sure these work properly because we wanna deliver services in terms of the dump trucks, uh, snow plows, uh, and also the hybrid cruisers. So anticipate that with those being successful, we'll see those being developed and implemented more into our fleet. I touch on just a few challenges I see in the community that we're gonna be really looking, looking to address. First of all, um, our indoor uh, aquatic center, the pool. As we're all aware, the uh, um, Healthy Life Center did not pass. We respect the voters' uh, decision and their direction. And so now we need to go ahead and start looking at what are we gonna do for an indoor aquatic center. Um, according to the uh, Ames Community School District, they're going to be demolishing in 2022, probably in the spring or early summer, that facility. And so it's likely that we will not have an indoor aquatic center in Ames um, that will be available for municipal use. Um, and so we're going to have to, we're going to go back out to the public. Certainly we were already talking about that uh, part of our goal setting session that we had earlier this year. Um, with the council and in discussions with uh, Parks and Rec, 
we were going to start going out to the community and then um, we got hit with the COVID-19 and that's kind of put that on pause for right now. But we're going to go out to the public, get their feedback and help us understand what they will support so we don't go out for another bond issue and find out that we don't have the support. Certainly mental health issues are um, being exacerbated um, in part by this uh, the virus. That's something we need to be looking at. Um, and also communication and engagement with the community by council. Um, we talked about this at length in the city council goal setting session, and we believe it's important um, for us as rep your representatives to be getting your feedback and input. And so consequently, the council adopted a goal to use the best communication engagement techniques and modern technologies to engage community by reaching people in geographic areas using multiple channels. And so we understand and realize that we may be going out in different modes and fashions to get feedback from the community. We just can't rely on one or two um, modes, one being uh, emails or two, I'm coming to the meetings, understanding people may not be able to come to the meetings. So we are gonna be exploring different ways of engaging. And again, that got put a bit on hold from the standpoint of what has recently um, developed. 2020 census, um, as, as you're probably all aware, um, every 10 years we go through this, this process and it has a profound impact on the amount of money that is distributed. It's about $675 billion a year is distributed nationwide um, and it's based in a portion in part by um, census. It also has an effect on our representation at the federal um, level. And so you probably all have received in the mail a card inviting you to go online and uh, claim aims and fill that out. Um, I think I got mine in late March, went ahead, filled it out, took me less than five minutes, I think, you know, to take care of that. Um, and being online, this is the first time you can ever do that. Obviously, our concern is students. We have about 30 some plus students, and we're not the only. <clears throat> community in the nation that has concerns regarding uh, not capturing uh, all our residents. Um, the direct directive is if you are living in the community uh, for at least half your time during the year, which students are, uh, you're to claim uh, the, the town where you're living in. And uh, we understand from some feedback already that some students that are at home, instead of coming back to Ames, they are claiming their own home where they're living versus claiming aims. Um, so that could impact not only um, the city, but it also could impact uh, Iowa State as well. Uh, options may include asking or petitioning the government to do another census next year. Um, but again, we'll stay tuned on that one. That's something we're gonna have to be looking at very seriously according to the city manager. Um, a community can petition to have a special census taken, but that's at the community's expense and it is very expensive. It's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to perform that. But if there is a demonstrated benefit to the county, to the city, to the university, uh, that may be something that we wanna look at. But uh, that's going to be something that we'll be watching and, and, and talking about uh, in the future, but it's something that we just can't um, afford to uh, go from our 66,000 plus residents and, and drastically drop because of uh, students. So I want to talk about now the COVID. Um, the, uh, first of all, I am just so um, impressed and pleased with how much planning has gone on in the entire community. Um, there's been a tremendous partnership between Mary Glee Medical Center, McFarland Clinic, Iowa State, Story County Department of Health, Ames and Gilbert School District, City of Ames and others have participated. I think the Chamber has been in some of the meetings and there may be other entities as well too. They started doing this back in, I think it was late February. They started talking about it. I knew it was coming, uh, so this did not catch anybody by surprise. Um, certainly each entity has endeavored to stay in their lane. The city is focused on continue to deliver services to our residents, uh, including uh, water, sewer, power, public works, fixing broken water mains, um, public safety, 
all very important aspects. We have not gotten ourselves into, while we are aware of what's going on at, in, in part at Mary Greeley, McFarland, Iowa State, um, we direct people who ask questions to those respected entities to get information versus us providing information. Uh, we certainly have our hands full focusing on our particular aspects of responsibility and also we want to respect the fact that others have responsibility in their particular areas. But the communication and the commitment to one another is absolutely um, remarkable. As Jean mentioned, <clears throat> Story County Emergency Management is, has been tasked with helping to coordinate and deploy resources that may be necessary, uh, including procurement of PPE. I uh, can go through Story County. And for the last three weeks, we've had <clears throat> weekly Zoom meetings um, with all the local communities. There's about uh, I guess 14 to 17 um, mayors that jump on, some with our city councils as well. Um, Iowa State participates, Story County supervisors, um, I represent the city, um, as well as our Story County Emergency Management. And just one example of the commitment countywide that there is, is uh, Keith Morgan, who is the Story County Emergency Management Coordinator, mentioned that they may have some difficulty in transportation, getting food from the food bank up here to our food pantry. And within the course of one minute, we had the mayor of Roland say, I'll, my wife and I will run down with our SUV and pick it up. And then Iowa State said, no, we, we got box trucks. They're both straight box trucks as well as refrigerated. We can go down and pick up some uh, product for you. And then someone said, well, there's a local Jeep club that would love to help out. So there's just an example, just one example of how people just say, hey, I can help. Um, just tell me what I need to do. Um, certainly um, not because Gene is president, but United Way has taken an amazing uh, leadership in helping to coordinate everything from some you know, child care initiatives. And I think Gene, you and I were on the phone uh, like three and a half, four, four and a half weeks ago talking about, okay, what are some things that we can start looking at? What can we start doing? Um, food pantries, other needs in the community. And those are going to kind of continue. And so uh, once again, Gene, thank you for you and your staff for all the efforts that you are doing. Uh, secondly is uh, Dan Colhane has done an amazing job representing the chamber and being so proactive, not only in Ames, but in the, the surrounding communities. And just, he's been on Zoom calls with us on uh, with the Story County Emergency Management. He's just saying, what can we do to help you um, strengthen or try and keep your businesses um, you know, up and running? And uh, so the chamber initiated that uh, those uh, gift card, uh, but they sold over 100,000 know, gift cards in the course of uh, less than a week. Um, he's, he's reaching out, finding out what's going on. And, uh, you know, candidly, I think we're all aware our local businesses are going to need to support, big time need to support once we get back into a, quote, new normal. The standpoint of the City of Ames, I mentioned the fact that we're very committed to maintaining services to our local residents. And uh, I just want you to be encouraged about, about what the, how the planning has gone on, but it's not only just been recently, but I was talking with John Dunn, who's our uh, department head for water plant and also the sewer plant. And I said, so how have you guys been planning? He says, well, interestingly enough, he said two years ago, we did a tabletop exercise on what would happen if a pandemic hit, Ames, hit, hit our country and how would that affect Ames and the services we provide? And he said, you know, we developed a manual. We went through all these what if questions. And she, Johnny said, I'm just telling you, he said, the things that we anticipated happening are happening and we're just going through step by step and checking the boxes. Um, and um, our city manager and his staff have done an amazing job working with department heads and just saying, okay, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if we have, <clears throat> what if we're down on staff? Uh, how are we gonna go ahead? Because we're really committed to keeping that water flowing, um, the sewer uh, and providing power. Um, but there, there's been some long, long, long hours put in by staff to try and figure this out because they're committed to providing the uh, services that we offer. And that also, meant, that also includes you know, police and fire uh, as well too. So the biggest concern is, what if all of a sudden half of our police force gets uh, infected? And so they've made some changes of how they operate in terms of doing their shift changes and, and other ways to try and protect staff from getting uh, infected. 
Um, and certainly we regretted having to do it, but closing public facilities was necessary. And, uh, and that was in part to protect public uh, as well as protect our staff. So while the facilities are closed, like City Hall, um, the library, uh, other offices, uh, staff are still reporting um, and they are still performing their services as well. So what are some of the community needs? Um, and I think that I would look to Gene and others to probably fill out that more, but I'm, there's no doubt that food pantries um, are really, the demand from those is just amazing. So do donations financially, as well as um, food. And I, I would I'd say if you're interested in doing that, either as a Rotarian group or individually, contact them first. Don't just you know, drop stuff off, but find out what their, their needs are. And they may need volunteers as well too. Uh, reaching out to your neighbors and those that you know who may be isolated. Uh, this can be a pretty lonely time, especially if you have a, you know, a single individual living by themselves. Um, I know there's people that are sending, they're sending out notes. They're, they're um, doing other ways, means of, of contacting. Uh, thankfully, we do have social media. I never thought I'd say that, but, but thankfully we have social media to reach out and connect and using this type of platform to uh, see people you know, face to face. Um, and then I just mentioned before, we're going to have to support our local businesses. Um, and this is now, not just now, but it's going to be, I'm going to come out of this. Uh, in terms of healthcare planning and preparedness, I am not going to go into anything regarding that other than, other than to say in my conversations with some of the uh, administration, uh, I just can't be prouder of their efforts, of their planning. And honestly, you probably read about it in the Tribune. There's been a lot of sacrifices that have been made um, by the hospital and also by um, the doctors. Uh, they gave up doing voluntary procedures. Uh, I have no idea, but I can only imagine the financial impact it has on both the hospital as well as the doctors because they don't just rely on people coming in to be treated when they're sick. They also do things that are voluntary as well too. But that's all to protect AIMS and that's all to have adequate um, PPE, ventilators, ICS, IC, IC rooms available. And I do know, without going into any detail, that they have a plan that they need to expand the hospital capacity, and they're working through that. Um, we are following the governor's lead on social distancing and staying home. Probably the most amount of emails that council and I received uh, before the governor really um, closed even more facilities was, why don't you issue a, uh, you know, a stay at home or shelter in place order? The, uh, <clears throat> the Iowa Attorney General, uh, opined uh, several weeks ago and just said point blank, that is only the governor's prerogative. No local entity has any um, authority to do that. And furthermore, there are some healthcare facilities, in particular at Iowa City, that do not want to be sheltering in place. They're concerned about their workforce. Complex issue, very complicated. And so we are following what the governor is recommending. And as you're probably aware from reading the newspaper over the weekend, um, with the additional uh, closing of some of the facilities in the parks and trying to keep it down 10 or less, the police are getting some increased phone calls. Um, but by and large, uh, in my limited being out of my house and driving around, I'm not seeing a huge amount of groups being in, in, large, in large areas. But I think people have to understand too, if you have less places to shop for product, you're gonna have more people in those stores, a la, Target or a Walmart or a Fairway or high V, um, and so consequently, uh, just trying to um, work with them. And, and boy, who can thank the grocery clerks and the people who are stocked on the shelves and who are operating the stores? I mean, those people are really um, providing a lot of comfort. And boy, if they weren't there, I, have, I don't think we, we want to know what's going to be like if we didn't have people. And so we need to thank them <clears throat> when you go in there and just say thank you for helping. Thank you for doing your part, and we really greatly appreciate that. Uh, city council meeting. Uh, we are tomorrow night doing our first city council meeting via Zoom platform. And you can go on to the city's website, citybames.org, go under the government heading, find a link to um, city council meetings. You can download the agenda, and there's a hot link to go into the Zoom meeting. If you prefer, you can call in. We're still going, to be, still going to be televising it on channel 12 and also on the, uh, the YouTube channel. All that is listed on the top of the agenda, so you're aware of that. And um, we will be taking public input, conducting public hearings. 
but our agendas have been shortened a little bit in order to allow for adequate time to address the issues. So what, what are our focuses gonna be going forward? Uh, one is, again, supporting local businesses. Um, we have gonna have to really come alongside them. Two is gonna be as the census. How are we gonna handle that, deal with that on the backside? Uh, one of the questions is, uh, what's the impact gonna be on Iowa State? Um, we are a company town, we all know that. And I have said ever since I started campaigning that for Ames to be successful, Iowa State has to be successful and vice versa. And so um, in talking from uh, off and on with Dr. Winterstein, I understand um, that no decisions have been made regarding other than for the first uh, session of two sessions for the summer, we're gonna do that online. No decisions have been made on that. And I know that you probably all saw Jamie Pollard's interview on you know, TV that they're gonna weather the storm right now, but the football season, that could be a different thing. So no decisions, no insight, um, but that's something that we are certainly concerned about and wanna monitor. Um, those who have lost jobs currently, there's probably no question there's gonna be some businesses that, will, that may not reopen. Um, there is, a, you know, one in the paper, you know, Village Inn has a permanently closed their doors. There may be others. And so how can we help them find jobs? And I guess having been the lowest unemployment um, in the nation, uh, hopefully those people can be, get redeployed to new opportunities in the community. Also developing uh, a new sense of normal. Um, I think a lot of us, I know I in particular, I have some underlying uh, health conditions that cause me to be you know, careful in terms of social distancing. Um, and so the, the issue becomes, uh, what's it gonna look like? Am I gonna go out right to a, a restaurant right away? Am I gonna go out and not think about that? Am I gonna wear a mask? And so, um, but we certainly wanna try and get our community back to normal, but what that's gonna look like, a lot of conversation on that. And then conducting public meetings. Will there be continuing social distancing once we get back into the council chambers? Will we sit six feet apart? A lot of questions, uh, no decisions as of yet, but um, things that right now our first focus was is doing triage and getting figured out how we can make sure we protect our, our, um, our community uh, on the basis of the uh, census hits, <laughs> on the basis of the virus hits. Um, but it's going to be something that we're going to look at. So, in conclusion, on the COVID-19, I just want to share that, you know, as it continues, and the governor was on at 11 o'clock today, and she just made it very clear, you know, that our peak is probably not going to hit us until the end of the month. And it continues to be a fluid and rapidly changing situation. And conditions can and will change quickly. And hence, we have to be flexible and nimble. And I believe all of our partners are committed to that. Secondly, just stay informed, if you would. You know, our City of Ames website, Mary Greeley uh, Chamber has a great website uh, with lots of links to resources. I just commend the Chamber um, for what they're doing. Uh, they're trying to keep it up to date and also are pointing uh, people in Story County, other communities to the, to the website to, uh, to have links. And uh, go to our website, it's www.cityofames.org slash COVID-19, and there's no hyphen between the COVID and 19, and you can get right to that page. And then, as you all probably are doing, you know, continue to stay at home as you can, uh, stay healthy, and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that the Ames community and the Story County is gonna get through this successfully. And uh, I'm just really appreciate the fact that uh, I think that Iowa, and I think Ames, we only have, Ames as of today only has eight COVID cases, and we know that at least a few of those have already recovered and gone home. And so we're very, very fortunate. I don't have any other information besides that, and I would defer to uh, Brian Dieter um, or, or others who would be willing to share that information. But boy, if, if we could win the lottery on this one and uh, get through this with a minor number of cases, um, the governor will be much more uh, app to open us up more quickly and uh, and get us going. So with that, um, I probably overstayed my welcome, but uh, I'll let you, uh, any questions people might have, happy to answer them. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the club. I think that you did not overstay your welcome at all, uh, Mayor, and I think that we are, our time is ticking really rapidly. There are a couple questions uh, about COVID, but I think we're going to have to um, 
put those on hold, but I did get quite a few things in the chat saying thank you for your leadership and thank you for all that you're doing. Um, as far as the members are concerned, I think we're gonna try this again. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Get a chance to connect um, and uh, we'll put chat on it for the next program. Um, Karen gave me our quote for today and then I'll sign off. We either make ourselves miserable, miserable or we make ourselves strong. The work is the same. So let's work hard to make ourselves strong. Let's work hard to make our community strong. If you haven't done the census, do your part now. If you haven't reached out to your neighbor, do your part now. Um, if you haven't said thank you to a grocery worker or a restaurant person who's running food to you or your uh, local medical person, say thank you. Um, I think uh, gratitude, is the name of the game right now. And I am grateful for being in a community that's so supportive. So thank you all. Thank you, Karen. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hey, Jean, if you want to send any questions to me, you certainly can too. And I can try and answer them by email. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Karen, hold on, don't sign me off yet. Okay, got him. We then, Jean, I think we're gonna be out. Thank you, John. <laughs>